Good evening all my YouTube friends and family. This is Quentin Avery again and good evening again. And I want to say that I made a video earlier today, same attire, same clothing, and I wanted to continue where I left off in the part two in the series of asked questions about does Adam and Jesus have anything in common? Now I apologize for my listeners because I said John a few times, but I meant to say Adam and Jesus. So to Dr. Burks and my wife, Dr. Avery, and my mother, Patricia Cormier, I thank you for calling me and catching that mistake because I really like, I, I, I try to be as perfect as possible. Uh, and so just to recap on what we were talking about earlier, and also, the phone calls that I got from my mother and Dr. Burks and my wife was uh, pertaining to Eve. So we can't leave Eve out. So we want to talk about Eve just a little bit and what Adam and Jesus has in common. So the word Adam means Adam and it means man. And so when God makes a man in his image, he's also going to send another man in the likeness of of the sinful flesh you can read that in Romans chapter 8 so 1 Corinthians 15 and 45 talks about the first man Adam and the last man Adam so you can answer if they have anything in common but the scriptures are pointing to the first and the last man Adam there is a scripture in Romans 1 and 17 that I'm gonna to read to you it says for the gospel for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith, but from first to last. And we know that Adam was the first man ever created. How do we know that? Because there was only one man created to let the world know there's only one God. God didn't make a bunch of people. He made one man. And we call him Adam, but Adam actually means man. So, as we recap right now, growing up in life, you would, would believe that Adam is the worst man on earth. We wouldn't be in the mess that we're in now in society, in a world, if it was not for Adam. But Adam, is he really such a bad guy? We're going to find out if Adam deserves all of the criticism all of the blame that we put on Adam today uh, so Adam uh, if you grew up like me Jesus is the perfect person people will use the quote what would Jesus do if it was time to feed a homeless person if it was time to give someone some money what would Jesus do now that's not in the scriptures but that's just what people say when they want to persuade you to give them some money now what happened in the case of Adam is that the scripture says in Romans 5 and 12 that through one man sin entered into the world and through that one man death came to all people because all people sinned. They disobeyed the creator. They disobeyed the command of God. And that's how death entered into mankind. So we're going to be comparing Jesus and Adam because through one man, death entered, and through another man, the resurrection and life is going to enter. And you're going to see that you still have the same choice that Adam had. <laughs> we still have the same choice that Adam had. It just depends on what your choice is. Just because someone said don't eat from a tree doesn't mean you still don't have the choice of obedience versus disobedience okay now um, let's recap and start back in Genesis the Creator created a man from the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he placed the man in a garden a place of life a place of prosperity a place of fruitfulness and a place of multiplication now he said be fruitful and multiply but when he placed him in there he placed him in there to bless him. And he did that on the sixth day. Now the Messiah, which is Jesus, or the last man, Adam, or Adam meaning man, 
he was placed into a garden tomb in the 19th chapter of John. He was also placed in a garden, but it was a place of death and a place of sorrow. It was reversed. God placed Adam in a garden to bless him. And then man took the son of God and placed him in a tomb, which was a place of cursing and a place of death. Man was trying to reverse what was actually condemned on mankind judgment cursed and condemnation romans 8 there's no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus now you got to know what that means but what man is going to do to the son of man to who god sent in the likeness of sinful flesh as he's going to be displayed for all of the world on that cross as a criminal as a blasphemer things that he never did Jesus had no sin, but he was made to be sin, to undo what Adam did. But is Adam really, really such a terrible guy? Let's take a look at it. So we got the garden. We got the sixth day. We've got the garden tomb. We've got the garden. Uh, Jesus, is, Jesus is placed in this garden and Adam is placed in this garden. And it all happens on the sixth day. Do they have anything in common yet? Well, let's just keep searching. Now, it was not suitable for man to be alone. So, the Creator caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. Now, the Apostle Paul mentions deep sleep being a symbol for deep sleep or death. So, he caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he took from his side or took from his rib and formed a woman, which was named Eve, which her real name is Kava, which is a Hebrew word for life or giver of life, which she will later give life to the children of Adam. So he presented the woman to the man as a bride or as a wife. Later in the 19th chapter of John, there are two people on the cross with Jesus. They break both of their legs. But when it comes to Jesus, Jesus had already breathed his last breath. He had already went into a deep sleep or he had already went into death. So instead of breaking his legs, they pierced the side of Jesus and out came a sudden flow of blood and water. You can read that in the 19th chapter of John. So. This is what they did to Jesus, the same thing they did to Adam, well not they, God did that to Adam, man did that to Jesus, and out came a sudden flow of blood and water. That is recognized as the birth of the church. The Apostle Paul will write in the book of Ephesians 5 and 25, and you read on down to the 30th chapter, he talks about the husband and the wife. But he says, this is a profound mystery. I'm actually talking about Christ and the church. The church are the followers, the believers, the one who investigate the claims of the scriptures and who live by righteousness or live by faith, those who believe. A church is not the building that you go to made with human hands, but it is the spiritual church of those who are following the Messiah and those who claim the Messiah to be their head. You are entering a covenant of marriage. Marriage is a covenant and covenant is a marriage is synonymous. And this means that you are making Christ your head and you are now partaking from a different tree, which is the tree of life, which is the tree of obedience. So now that you are now partaking from that, now they both have children. So now the first Kava or Eve have children, which is the bride of Adam. And then the bride of the last Adam, which is Jesus, also have children. The first fruits of all those who've fallen asleep. And now we produce more fruit, those who we teach to continue to be righteous in Christ. So now let's talk about that tree since we're talking about first fruits and fruits and seeds and things of that nature. Okay, so now there was a tree that was placed in the center of that garden. It was a tree of good, of knowledge of good and evil, and a tree of life. Now, the tree, the Creator told uh, Adam, do not partake. You can partake of any tree in the garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, 
do not partake from the day you eat you shall surely die now that was a live tree and it brought death and it brought the fall of man now the messiah was placed on a cross and the cross is made of wood and it is a dead tree and this cross is placed excuse me in the center of the world and in the center of all ages so that all who partake from the knowledge of the messiah and all that partake from that particular tree from the blood that was shed from his body that was a sacrifice then the more you partake from that fruit that tree the fruit of knowledge then the more alive we become so these are the different trees that we need to recognize and knowledge be knowledgeable in the scriptures now let's uh we've talked about the piercing of the side we talked about the two trees we talked about the two atoms and we're talking about the two wives now uh the scripture says for since death came through a man the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man adam and jesus uh the scripture says uh and that scripture is in first corinthians 15 21 and 22 the next one says uh so it is written the first man adam became a living being the last man adam a life-giving spirit or King James is writ so it is written uh, the first man Adam was made a living soul the last and Adam a quickening spirit so in 2nd Corinthians 5 and 21 it says God made him who had no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God so the Creator made Jesus or the last Adam in the likeness of sin so that he can become sin so that we can become his sons and daughters the children of God so the first man Adam was without sin he was immortal he was incorruptible until the day that wickedness was found in him wickedness was found in him when he sinned but he was without sin because he was created in the image of God now the Creator sends Yahshua the Messiah down from heaven in the likeness of sinful flesh and then he made him to be sin for us to undo what Adam did now Apostle Paul wrote in 1st Timothy 2 and 13 and 14 he said for Adam was formed first that's a fact he said then Eve and Adam was not the one who was deceived it was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner so Adam was formed first, that's a fact, and then Eve, that's a fact. And Adam was not the one that's deceived, that was a fact. And it was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. So what does that mean? That Adam, when he partook of the fruit, he was sacrificing his life for his bride. That's the same thing that Jesus did. He sacrificed his life for us and we are the bride so I ask you again how much does Adam and Jesus have in common thank you for listening to part two and there's probably going to be more to cover but I'll leave you with that for now have a blessed night have a great night and I hope you join us for Bible study tomorrow on Facebook live Avery Morehouse please click like if you like the video and subscribe and uh, see you next time.